Hang on, you can turn the sound off. My friend Jerry gave me this headlamp, but it's a little big. I think I have a better use for it. for the side. I'm in Fusion 360 and I'm gonna start by inserting a canvas. I took these pictures on my phone and I had to convert them to JPEGs because Fusion does not like the iPhone HEIC file format. So I'll insert it on this face, rotate that, go to my canvas, right click and go to calibrate. Then I'll click on two and six. Those are four inches apart. So I can just type in four, hit enter. And now this is scaled to the proper size. Now I'm gonna create a sketch on top of this and just trace that inner border. So I'll create a spline. And this doesn't need to be tight up against the edge. There we go. And if you hit escape, you can click on these points and drag it to adjust the spline. Okay, that looks great. I'm just gonna create a new parameter and call this plate thickness. I'm not really sure what this is gonna be, but I'll put it at 0.1 for now. Then I'll extrude this outline by plate thickness. I can turn off this canvas and insert another one. Now I wanna insert this one on a perpendicular plane. Now I can use that canvas to get the profile of this curve. This time I'll create an arc and I'll just connect those with a line so we have a closed profile. If I extrude that out, we can use the align tool to put this face on here. We can use the move tool to move this is nice and centered. Now that curve doesn't extend to the edges because the edges are flat. Now we can use the combine tool to combine these into one object. Just select those two profiles and extrude them to delete. I want to add some pins to this to fit into those slots. So I'm gonna create a new sketch on this flat face and just trace those rectangles. And I'm gonna make them a little smaller than actual so I have a better chance of them actually fitting in. Now I want to pull these to the other side. Let's try minus 0.4. Do we have 0.275 there? No, it's gotta be shorter. Let's make it, let's make it a 10th of an inch shorter. And then these ones, we'll just pull these out a little more. Lovely. I need to be able to remove this plate so I can replace the batteries. So I'm gonna use screws to attach it to the Triceratops. So I took this apart a little bit and I should be okay to put screws in there and there because there's no electrical components behind there. I'm gonna create some new parameters. I measured my screws and we have the screw head diameter, screw head thickness, screw shaft diameter. So if I turn my canvases back on, I can see about where I can put my screws. I'm gonna put one up here because I know there's nothing in there that I'll screw into. And we'll put another one right here. Now I'm going to create a hole at each of those points. It's gonna be a counterboard hole. This is screw head diameter, screw head thickness, shaft thickness. All right, that looks good. Now we wanna add our magnet hole. I measured my magnet and the magnet diameter, 1.161 inches, and then the magnet thickness. I want room in this cavity for epoxy, so I'm going to make the diameter of this circle bigger than the magnet diameter, plus 0.02. And then same thing with the thickness. We wanna leave some room so this sits below the surface. So if we add another 0.02, I think that would be good. Fantastic, okay. So let's turn our canvas off. I'm going to chamfer these edges so that they slot easier into the slots. So let me change my selection filters to only going to select body edges. I'm gonna select these edges, these edges, and these edges. 
Uh, let's try 0 0.02. Yeah, that looks great. Now we can work on the bike side. So I'll create a new sketch on here, project this shape, and then extrude that by our thickness as well. New body, project my magnet cavity, and then extrude that. This will be minus magnet thickness, subtracted 0.025. I really should have added to that as a parameter, but it's all good now. Okay, so that poked all the way through, which tells me that this plate needs to be thicker. So I'm gonna right click, edit this feature, which was our original extrude, and then change that to two times the plate thickness. Because the other one's fine, it's just this one that needs to change. And if I turn on my section analysis, let's just see how close we are in the middle. You know what, just to be safe, I'm gonna change this to plate thickness times three. I wanna add pins to make a stronger connection and to line these up. I guess I'll put the pins on the light side. That way we don't have extra stuff sticking out of our bike when this isn't on. Pin diameter, pin depth, maybe one right there, right there. Let's do five, we'll do the final one right there. I'm gonna change the pin diameter to 0.3 because 0.2 does not seem like enough. Right click, extrude, depth. Yeah, again, that just doesn't look very substantial, but we'll see how much it pokes into our other one. Now we can do a combine. The target body will be our bike side. The tool body will be our light side. We'll do a cut and keep our tool. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna increase that pin depth, maybe like 0 0.2. <laughs> Split the difference, 0 0.15. Awesome. I'm going to offset the faces of the female side of our pins so that we can actually fit the pins inside. Maybe 0.15. I like how these are asymmetrical, then it's really clear that it only goes on one way. And I wanna do the same thing with the depth. I'll do those minus 0.03. Awesome. So now our pins will fit in there. Those two are fit together. Now we just need to find a way to attach this to the bike. So this plate is gonna go on the post. Create a sketch on that plane. Let's project this line, a line out from the center by, what's the post diameter? 1.64 divided by two. And then we can create a circle at that point that is 1.64 inches in diameter. Now the height of the post is three and a half inches. So I'm gonna extrude it on both sides, 3.5 divided by two. We can create a new sketch on top, project the circle. We're gonna create a ring, so I'll we'll offset this outwards. I think 0.15. This will be a new body. Let's turn off the center. And we can use that construction plane to split body for our ring. So I'll split that in half. The splitting tool will be this. So we'll remove that. Let me turn off this front. Are we poking into, oh fantastic. We're not poking into this at all. So I can just do a simple combine. Probably should add a fillet to the inside for strength. Maybe 0.2. Awesome. I'm gonna use zip ties to attach that to the post. And I'll create a new sketch here. So I'll create a rectangle here and then offset it inwards. The best tool to use here is actually sweep to sweep this profile along this path. We don't need to go all the way though. We only need to go like maybe 10% of the way, if that. Yeah, that looks perfect. Okay, so now we can use mirror and the mirror plane is going to be there. To the bottom, right there. Lovely. So before I print, I'm gonna split this body because I don't want all the support material around these pegs. Splitting tool is this. So now we can print these separately and then glue them together. Let's do it. Obviously these pieces will be out in the elements, so I'm printing them out of PETG, which is a really durable filament that has good UV and thermal resistance. I printed this with support material under the magnet hole. So we got our two halves. This one goes in here. Oh, look at that, perfect fit. I'm just doing this to basically drill out my screw holes. There we go, still works. We didn't hit any electrical components. Some five minute epoxy. Put 
this in place, this half on top. Now we can epoxy the magnet in place. There's our magnet. Oh, lovely, it's sitting under the surface perfectly. All right, we can leave that to cure. There's the bike side of the mount. Just under three hours to go. If you'd like to directly support this channel and help me make more videos, consider becoming a patron. I have a Patreon page, which I'll link in the description. There are some cool rewards over there, including stickers and a patrons only Instagram page where I share exclusive behind the scenes content. The support material kind of failed right here, but it was still able to print the zip tie holder. It's the thing with PETG is it's strong, but sometimes the prints aren't very clean. Take out this support material. I think that, I think that did it. Perfect, there we go. Okay, very important that we put the magnet in the right way. Okay, so this side needs to be down. D for down. Oh, these magnets are super hard to separate, which is a good sign for the project. D facing down. Perfect. All right, let's see. That's solid. That is so fun. Although, definitely turning the sound off. I love it. The magnetic quick release works super well. It snaps right into place. The pin plus the magnet provide the perfect amount of strength to keep it attached during a bike ride, but it's still easy to remove with one hand. Let me know in the comments what you would do with a 3D printed quick release. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing. If you'd like to directly help me make more videos, check out my Patreon page. Thanks again, and I will see you in the next video.